Thank you, John and Helen. Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely time with your loved ones yesterday. Today, we'll be delving deeper into the concept of giving. John and Helen have already touched on the topic of giving. And with me today is my esteemed guest, Pastor Itwai Godalo. However, before I introduce him formally, let's look at the word giving. Giving has a myriad of meanings from voluntary, given to people without expecting anything in return. That's usually what we do during Christmas time. We give gifts to placing something in someone's care, to giving of your time. There's so many ways in which people can give. And this is a topic that is really dear to my heart because with more giving, there are more opportunities. So let me introduce Pastor Itwa Igodalo. As you all know, Pastor Itwa Igodalo needs very little introduction. He's pastor, Trinity House. He's also a chartered accountant. He's an avid writer. He's a man that's passionate about governance. And more importantly, he's a family man. Welcome, Pastor Itwai Godalo. Thank you. I'm also Farah's uncle. Yes, he is. My real uncle. Yes. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Pastor Itwai Godalo. Thank you, Farrell. And it's good to see you in the studio. Your mom used to do things like this. She told me about that yesterday. Almost 45 years ago. Yes. So the apple doesn't fall far. <laughs> <laughs> she reminded me yeah, yesterday. Yeah, she was a top newscaster yes. in WNTV. Yes. 1977. Yes. Wow. A few days before you were born. Ah. <laughs> P.I. has just told everybody how old I am now. Um, <laughs> that's really, 75, really interesting. 75, 76, 77. Wow. Fast 73 wow. from A-levels. Wow. She said I had newscasting. Wow. So, so really, there you go. this was bound to happen. Well, <laughs> it keeps running around. Astray 2 used to be on, on, on radio. Wow. Yes, many years ago. Wow. So the apple really go. does not fall far not from far, the tree. Not far. <laughs> not far. So, on to the topic of giving. Yeah. What does giving mean to you? Um, let me put it in two perspectives. Giving before I became a Christian. Okay. Or born again Christian. Okay. And giving subsequently. Okay. Uh, before I became a born again Christian, I had a passion to just help people and just yeah. try to do my best. But like my dad, I was a little bit of a miser, to be honest, in terms of preserving money and yeah. things like that. Uh, but I was able to give and help people. A uh, cousin of mine called Robert tells stories of how I would come from England, he'll raid my wardrobe, take everything away and I won't complain and so on and so forth. So there's that desire to help people. I remember writing a letter to my uncle in the village telling him to do certain things in the village to make life better. So I've always had that passion to okay. give and to help and to support. But when I became born again and I began to study the scripture and go to church and so on and so forth, I understood the underpinning mm -hmm. and the fundamentals and the essentials of giving. And it lies in a scripture that says, a man's life does not consist of the abundance of the things that he has. It says, God does not measure your life by what you own, what you have, what you call your own. Mm. But God measures your life by the effect that you've been able to have on other people's lives. So he says, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came to give me comfort. Then they mm. said, when did we do all these things, Lord? He says, whatever you do to the list of my people, you have done it to me. So God wants you to give mm. to other people and make life better for them. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that insight. To delve a little deeper into that, I'm now going to, I'd like to understand the relationship between giving and values because this show is centered around family values. So what is the relationship between giving and values? 
There is a relationship between giving and values. When you are willing to give, you are able to give, you are giving without expectation of return. It shows that you have given of yourself, mm. you are not self-centered, mm. you are not greedy, and you are willing to help and invest in yourself, uh, of yourself in other people. So it shows that you have this value when you are totally debased, mm. humble, mm. dead, mm. and you are a trustworthy and reliable person. So there is a bit of a connection between your thinking of yourself, your mm. attitude towards yourself, your moral uh, tangent, and your capacity to give. So if you give, it means that, first of all, you are not a greedy person. Secondly, you don't consider valuable anything, especially materialistic. Mm. It means you are also a caring person and okay. a person who is very compassionate uh, with others. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So I'm then going to go on to my next question, which, again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture and to take us back to the Nigeria of today. Do you believe that in the many, many years that you've been on this earth in Nigeria, as a Nigerian, do you believe that these values, the concept of given has changed? I think so. I think so. Uh, the Nigeria that I grew up in, and I boast about it, was a very simple country. There were no barbed wires. Mm. There were no burglary proofs. Mm. There were no high walls. Mm. Uh, it was a simple country, but it was a place where everybody sort of minded their own business, mm. and uh, there was not too much philanthropy. But life was predictable. I mean, you could build a house on a civil servant salary. You could buy a car. You could send your children abroad. Everybody was taken care of. Yes. A little bit like what you find yeah. in England or Europe today. Mm. You know, there was a good social welfare system. And therefore, people did what they needed to do, minded their business. But over the time and with the advent, especially of Pentecostal Christianity and the rundown a little bit of our economy and the push in of a lot of philanthropy, especially all over the world, there's been an upsurge mm. of, of giving. Uh, almost every serious con company now has what you call a CSR department yes. where they have something called corporate social responsibility. Yes. Yes. I think it's a pushback mm. to the level of poverty and lack that mm. you generally find in society. Mm. So in those days, giving wasn't a buzzword. It wasn't a th something you really thought about. It was just about. something you do. It was just something yes. you did. It was a way of life. Yeah, you gave to your mm. in-laws, you mm. gave to your family, you gave mm. to your relatively poor people in the village. Mm. In those days when we went to Isha or mm. Kegbo, mm. my mom would pack our suitcases full of our old clothes and mm. things mm. and then go mm. to the village and distribute mm. them and take money and give. That was about the extent of giving that yes. most average families did. But now it's become a part of culture, a part of society, a part of business. In fact, some businesses now are measured on their capacity to relate to society. And this, like you said, is as a result of the decline in given. So there's been a pushback to increase the amount of given that happens across the board and create more opportunities to give through things like corporate social responsibilities. But you see, the thing here the is... Decline not in giving, yes. but decline in economics, in yes. environment, yes. a higher level of poverty weaker governments mm. uh, who are not able mm. to fulfill the needs of the people mm. and therefore a demand mm. by private society to step in. Excellent. I see what you mean. So if we were going to take it back to the individual, because it takes multiple individuals to become these bodies that we talk about, what are the three key pieces of advice you would give individuals generally on how to become more given in different areas of their lives? So that, because I strongly believe that once we begin to work as a team, we actually are better able to effect change. As individuals, um, one thing I say, and people know me for, is that aside from giving your life, to Jesus, giving your life to God, mm. uh, fearing God, mm. the next most important thing is to discover your purpose. 
your mm. purpose mm. in life, the reason mm. for which you were created. Mm -hmm. Okay, a fish is not taught to swim. A leopard is not taught to run. Mm. A monkey is not taught to climb. Mm. A bird is not taught to fly. Every human being has a purpose inside of them that they have been created for. Now, if you can get onto that platform, everything that you need to fulfill that purpose, including the capacity to give, will be easy for you. The second thing, of course, is that um, inside of your purpose will be something that will benefit society uh, at large. Yes. It won't be something just for yourself. Yes. Okay. Yesterday I went to visit somebody in hospital after church okay. and a friend of hers was there with her and the lady has had a long stay in hospital mm. and the friend thought, let me cheer you up, let me decorate your hospital room, it's Christmas time. Da, da, da. So she went out of her way to ask people for money to mm. decorate her mm. friend's hospital room. She got nothing. So she went back almost to the same people and then said, you know what, maybe we should just gather some things and give out to people in the hospital and give out to the people who are weak, the people who are sick, the nurses. And she went around almost to the same people mm. and they supported her. Oh, they wow. had more than enough oh, that wow. they could give to everybody in the hospital. And that taught me a very great lesson, mm. that if you keep looking for money for yourself to yes. satisfy yourself, which yes. a lot of people do, to buy jewelry, to buy a new shoe, to mm. buy a new car, to build mm. a second house, third house, fourth house, where they don't live in. It becomes a struggle. Yes. But when you are looking for money to help other people, then it becomes easy. So your giving or your uh, purpose in life yes. is to give of yourself yes. to make life better for, for others. Other people. And the third is to debase. John the Baptist said that I may decrease so that he can increase. To think of yourself less, mm. to think of yourself uh, and your needs less, mm. uh, to think of the needs of others a bit more, and to simplify your life. You understand? Uh, you can't sleep in a bed, uh, more than a bed at mm. a time. And even in that bed, you can sleep only in one section. Mm. You can't wear 10 clothes at the mm. same time. Mm. There's very little that a man basically needs. A lot of it is greed. So I'm now going to go on to the next question which I actually did not plan on asking. You kind of recently lost the love of your life, um, my auntie. And what you've just talked about now in terms of debasing yourself and being not be, making sure that you're not the priority you know, how has that come into play? Because you've, I have literally watched you do more, give more of yourself, you know, just be available to everybody and everything, knowing fully well that you are still grieving the loss of the love of your life. So how, how have you, how does giving, how does it correlate? <laughs> that, that's interesting. I think it's really based on my understanding. Mm. My wife has gone. What has happened has happened. Mm. I'm not going to stop life and just stew in pity party and self pity party and have everybody sort me out. And no, 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 no. Life must sort of continue. Mm. We must continue doing the things that we need to do and make sure we fulfill our responsibilities while giving a lot of love and respect to the one that has passed. Mm. So when my wife passed, there was only three, four things in my mind. Number one, what does God want? Mm. And what is God doing mm. in this situation? Number two, what would it be to me like? How mm. can I make her happy even at this time? And number three, how can I make sure that life goes on mm. and everybody around me mm. gets the same kind of ministration that they need to get. Mm. So the day she died, and people, I don't know, some say I did well, some say I didn't do well, but it doesn't matter to me. I just knew that I had to continue doing what I had to do. So number one, church mustn't be interrupted. So I didn't tell anybody. I went to church, had a good service, finished the service, and I escaped. I had a funeral that day. I had to conduct the funeral and give comfort 
to those who were grieving. When I finished those two assignments, and then I went to my mother-in-law, and I spent time with her to try and comfort her, I then went back home, and then got into the reality of my new situation. Yeah. And then people came all over the place. But then things needed to be done. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five things. <laughs> and uh, we started doing them. And thank God for your uncle last week. He was a real pillar of strength. He took charge and uh, allowed me to just be. But yes. then I took final decisions on everything. And then, so what would the people want? What's best to do? What would God want? How is it? How do we make this thing, whole thing, something that we know that God is still in control. Awesome. So you just have to shape your mind so that you can do the right thing at the right time. Thank you so, so much, Uncle. It has been, <laughs> it's been an honor to actually have you here as my guest. As P.I. said, he's actually my uncle, you know, by birth. And it's, it's amazing. And to be able to get such insight from you. And I, I really hope that the messages that you've passed across in this few minutes that we spent together has impacted other people's lives and has left indelible lessons. Because ultimately, everything is connected. And we all have to be a part of the circle of life one of the major elements being the ability to be able to give. Thank you so much for giving up your time today. Thank you very much. Let me just say one or two things. When you give, you do get benefits, but the ultimate giving is giving without expectation of return. Yes. And yes. that God will deal with on your behalf. Vera, I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. Continue <laughs> being what you're doing. And uh, do better than your mom. <laughs> <laughs> on live TV <laughs> thank you uncle right, thank you dear. so much God bless you. right next we have our fitness segment and with us is Eric Brown here to show us some very simple exercises that we can do at home in less than 10 minutes welcome Eric Brown Welcome to the fitness segment on the breakfast show on PLUS TV. My name is Eric and I'm from La Fijin. So we're going to be showing you exercises you can do in a hurry. Exercises you can do in a go. Exercises that will take just about you know, 10, 15 minutes to do and after that you carry on with the rest of your day. This won't take time but something that will just hit most muscle group as you do it. So I'll be doing this with my friend Jaye. She will join me as we continue this exercise as we, as we go on. So, first, we have to warm up, then we'll go into the exercises, and then we just we'll stretch at the end of it. So, join me as we go. Today, we'll be doing okay, just jumping jack and squats, okay? Something we'll, we'll do a jumping jack, but we'll punch, and then we'll squat. So, we're hitting the upper body, the lower body, and then we'll also hit our cardio as hard as we can, okay? And this is going to take just about 10 minutes. It won't take time at all, so I need you to join us to do this. Are you ready? All right, so we'll start with a simple warm-up. So, we'll just go there. Just go on the spot, like a football run. We're gonna do this for one full minute. You can add your hands and swing your hands if you like, or you keep it steady. Just keep going. One, two. Eight, nine, and 10. Now kick there, just stand and kick, go. There, remember, you need to warm up when you work out, okay? When you exercise, you need to warm up before the main exercise. This allows blood to flow, okay? Allows blood to pump to the right areas, and then you also will be able to avoid injuries. Oh, tear, as the case may be. All right, let's bring it up. One, there. These are simple exercises you can do on the spot, on the go. All right, stay in the spot. Now let's go. One, two. Eight, nine, and ten. Good job. All right, put your hands here. Make a circle. Let's go back opposite direction. One. Good job. All right, shake it out. Shake it out. 
Okay, so we're going to the exercise proper. First, we're going to try, we're going to go for jumping jacks, okay? I want us to go for 25 jumping jacks. Now, this is jumping jacks. You stay here, hands by the side, and then you go. Old school jumping jack. I'm sure a lot of us did it when we were in school, all right? For those of us that have maybe knee issues or something, you can jump, you can also do, go this way. You don't have to jump. You just do this. So we'll do that 25, and then we're going to squat 25. We'll do it again, 25, we'll squat 25. We'll do it three times, catch our breath, and we'll repeat again. Are we ready? Okay, let's go. All right, we're going to squat. You go, there. That's one, two. Good job, three. Now, when we squat, four. I need you to watch side, five, okay? Go down, there, like you want to sit, on the chair, okay? Try not to start your squat from the knee. That's like about 10, we have 15 to go. All right, see? You go as if you want to sit on the chair. Don't start your squat from here. It's wrong, okay? Just go back, making sure your knee does not travel beyond your toe. Now, for those of us five who can't squat easily like this, it's okay for you to get a chair, sit on it, and stand up until you're able to improve and squat without this kind of support. Or you can get, you can hold something, you know, hold an object, maybe a chair or something, or a table, and squat, so that you'll be able to, you don't put too much pressure on that knee. Let's check it out. Okay, now, I want us to just add just one more move to it, okay? So we're gonna add a plank and shoulder tap to it. Go, one, two, Three, four, five. Elbow, one. Shoulder, one, two, three, four, and five. Bring it down. Yes. Good. Okay. So, we're going to take the remaining one or two minutes and stretch. All right. So, from here, just do this. Bring your hand, hold onto your heel. Push both heels. Look up. One, remember, we've gone into the stretch now. Two, release one hand up, right hand, and go. Come back, hold again, the other side. Let's go, one, move it back down. Give me a hollow pull. Bring your right leg forward. Hold and pull back. Let's stretch the hamstrings. Nine and ten. The other leg, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's my time, guys. I hope this will, this will save you as you do this on the go. Every day, just make out 10, 10, 15 minutes. Just do this every day. Make out and stretch. Enjoy that. Thank you very much. See you next time.